Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of my Python Turtle game. So this is just going to be a simple overview of how the game works and me actually going through the code of the game instead of just giving you a demonstration of it so you guys can see It's made in Python using the Thony IDE. I'll link below what how I download this. So it, the import uses turtle, random and async. Async I'll go into later, that's a bit more complex for beginners. Turtle and random are actually something. So the turtle function just is where the game is. Turtle allows you to create simple turtle sprites. It's called turtle, that's the sprite, the original sprite is called turtle, that's how you define them. So all these sprites, turtles, and the background, the border, is drawn via a turtle with different names. So to define these turtles, you can see here you have player equals turtle.turtle. This is defining the player, and for every sprite you have, for example, point or scoreboard, it you have to have that to define a new turtle. And then from now there on, it will refer to there. If you're just using turtle normally, for example, if I was looking in and go import turtle, and then I could just have turtle dot forward. I don't have to define turtle because its original name is already turtle. And if I have a turtle forward 100, then it will go forward 100 to the right direction and draw a line behind it. As you can see there, this is 100, I believe it's pixels, I'm not sure what it's counted in. But it creates a straight line there. And then if I create a for loop for x range, and let's say 360, we'll draw a circle. Like that. Just simply have a turtle dot right one. So this means I'll go forward one and turn one degrees after or 360 times, which should create a circle to make it go. Well, I'll show you first. As you can see, it's doing it, but it goes extremely slow. So to make it go faster, we can define our turtle speed. To make it go the fastest speed, you just put turtle. That may seem like it make it really low, but zero makes it go the fastest speed possible, as you can see. The reason it still moves slow is because it moves one degree and one forward. So this is actually really fast, considering how much movement it's doing. There are built-in functions to do things, but I'm going off track. So, if we go back to the game, you've got the random function, which is the other one that I... Um, showed up here. The random function, basically what this does is it uses the random.randint function. Int stands for integer, which just means any whole number. So the random.randint function um, picks a number between these two defined sets. So between minus 350 and 350, which is the border. Now, so this picks the coordinate. This is the x. This picks the x. This picks the y. I didn't use x and y because they're built in coordinates and turtles. I use a and b instead. So this picks two coordinates, a and then b, at random, and that tells them the point where to go. So later on, you'll see a like here, scoreboard.goto, and this this function makes the turtle sprite go there. So the scoreboard is at this position. It's, as you can see, it's at 370, which is larger than the 350, which is outside of the border. And if you're on the code, you can see it's up here. Out the border's here, so it goes past it. So if you scroll down, so this is just defining all of the enemies, borders, all of the sprites basically. And this draws the border. It's just a four x in range four, because of the four sides of the square, and how big it is. It's 710 and 90 degrees each time because that's the angles of the square then this just shows all of the sprites so it makes them visible on the screen so i this list is all contained in a sub program so it won't run immediately it'll only run when the game is called the game function which i call later on below so next i've defined enemy movement this basically just determines how the enemies move it's real simple you've got enemy that set heading so set heading just means turn to and it turns to um, enemy dot towards player. So the, basically this line means that the enemy will always be facing the player, which um, as you can see, well I'll show you later, it will. And enemy dot forward D, D is defined previously. D is a function up here. So when I call enemy movement, whatever's in the place of D is their speed. Since I've got two enemies, I have them going at separate speed. So enemy one uses a speed of two. Um, 
um, and the enemy two moves up speed of three. And this increases, as you can see up here, it increases, it multiplies by score divided by five. So whatever the score is divided by five, that's what's multiplied by, which means that the more points you get, the faster the goal, which makes it really difficult to play the longer you've been doing it. This tells the point where to go, the go to dot random and things. I don't know why I included these, I can actually change these to the A and B I defined earlier, and it should still work the same. Uh, I didn't know, I just had to put global A and B. This basically allow uh, this basically allows for variables that aren't defined in this specific subprogram, because you can see. Well actually this is a coroutine which I'll explain later. But it basically means that variables defined as a coroutine or subprogram don't have to be redefined in here. They can just be globalised, which means they're available in all the code, no matter where they're run. So what this does, as you can see, it works like a normal subprogram with the define and then the name of it, define main, just the main game. But the async part is from what I showed earlier on, at the very top, the async async hub, or async dio, not not dio. So um, what that does is it instead of how normal Python would work and running each piece of code line by line, it allows it all to be run at once, which prevents the enemies from moving and the player moving and the score changing. It allows it all to flow seamlessly. There's still a few kinks need to work out. I'm not fully. Um, educated on how coroutines work in Python, but it helped make the code less jittery when I added the enemy. Uh, later on, you can see we've got define menu, this is just the button, so this draws the buttons, this defines the area the buttons click, minus 2 x, the x coordinate is between minus 200 and 200, which is the width, y coordinate is between minus 175 and 7 minus 75, the height for the exit button, and then the similar thing is done for the play button. I can actually get rid of these, this was for testing. So that just print exit and print play every time I press one of those buttons. So down here we've got define setup, so turtle.speed0, which I told you makes the turtle go the fastest speed, and turtle.hide turtle. So this just makes it so the player can't see the turtle. What this does is it just um, sets up the turtle so when it draws the boxes, you won't be able to see the sprite. So here we've got define buttons. Um, and this just runs the um, drawing sub program for the buttons and also writes in the names of the buttons. So here it's play and what font it uses, size, if it's bold or where it is, it's in the center. And same with the other one, so the first and second button. And here this just runs the rest of the sub program. We've got tell that update, which just updates the screen. So it'll constantly be checking for changes like in enemy movement, score, point movement, play movement, and updating them. And at the bottom here, we've got the menu, which is the main thing up here. Once menu is defined, it allows us to go to buttons. And when we go to the buttons, um, this defines either to quit the game or to start the game. Once you start the game, it defines everything else in the game sub, sub program up here, which defines everything in the main sub program. So everything runs a different sub program, and overall, it works. There are still some bugs you need to work out, which I'll show you later, but for now, I'll just give you a quick rundown of how it works. You see, that's why I guess I didn't include the A and B function. So if I just, I'm going to just put those back to normal for now and I'll fix that later. So, A and B there. So if we go here, click play. Stop. Play. As you can see, yeah, we've got the game, so the enemies don't start moving until you get a point. Um, the game is controlled with the arrow key, so use the forward and back to go forward and back, and you use the left and right to turn left and right, very simple. I feel using it with two hands, and I know a lot of people are more skilled on the keyboard than me, and use one hand to the other keys. So, as you can see, the more points you get, the speed increases, until eventually, once you get to the speed of 5, it will be the original speed which is 2 and 3 because the speed is times the, their speed is times by the point divided by 5 so 5 divided by 5 is 1 and their speed times by 1 which is made the original speed so as you can see they're getting faster it gets really difficult once you get in the 15s range and also the annoying part is once they get fast enough when you start going from the point they're following you which means they'll be near the point too which makes it harder to go there without getting hit so you've got to lure them away. 
But what's good about this is they can't go through walls like you. You can go through walls and appear on the other side. And they'll just immediately go to your new location. So if I turn here, go up. As you can see, they're gaining speed. The blue one is always faster than the red one because the blue one's speed was defined as three times the score divided by five, whereas the red ones was only two times score divided by five. Um, the, that's the reason for the color differentiation why the blue just made them both red, which it gets annoying because the blue one gets especially fast later on, especially when I get to around the twenties range. I haven't be twenty-four, my eight. I was aiming for twenty-five. So the way I did this movement through wall is I set a boundary which is basically I just set the X and Y coordinates for the walls, Y for the top and bottom, X on the left and right, and once this coordinate was set I just wrote a simple statement, if statement, saying that if a um, player is touching this wall then it will go to the opposite wall. So left wall and right wall are defined by their X coordinates, top wall and wall are defined by all up wall and down walls I defined them. Are defined by their y coordinates this time, like a graph. And zero zero is at the center of the screen, like a X graph that you find in maths or science. No problem, maths. So originally I did add a timer function, but that slows things down because that was constantly having to update. I did that before I added the cut coroutines, so I might bring that back. So if you guys want to see a timer just saying how long you've been playing in the top right, it was, and as you can see, I died there. Um, if you want to see that, then leave a comment down below and I'll invite it back. Another thing I also had that's not there anymore is I used Pygame previously um, and a little function Pygame that played a simple sound file every time a point was scored. That's in one of my previous videos, I believe it's in episode 3 or 4. So you should check that out. It basically just plays the Discord notification sound every time you get a point. I thought it was funny and I couldn't think of the point sound. Uh, I was thinking of using the Google Snake Apple eating sound. I figured this is something similar to that. You know, Except this one, you only to die to your enemies, you don't crash into a wall. That, that'd be easy not to crash into a wall. You're not constantly moving, you can stop yourself from moving if you just uh, go backwards and stay still. Although this uses acceleration, so even when my hand's not on the keyboard, I'm still moving, but it's being reduced by a friction by a friction variable, which I said earlier on, which I'll show you guys now. So, if we go down here, you, as you can see, if speed is larger than zero, speed is speed, then speed is speed, times minus friction which makes it an exponential decrease, and this makes it an exponential increase if it's smaller than zero, because when you're going backwards in technical classes you have minus speed, which I don't really see a problem with, so I just had a, a separate elif statement there. Then I've got an if statement here, because since speed is minus by friction, it will never actually get fully to zero if it's not, uh, if the overall speed is not a factor of friction, so um, instead it just picks a certain range that speed will always get to between minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.2, and if speed gets within this range, then speed will just go instantly to 0. Uh, same with turn as well, except turn is a bit higher if it's 0 0.7, because the way turning works is it, it, well, it not increases increments by 0 0.8 instead of the speed. Oh, no, the speed Oh, it's because turning has an if statement, because I thought at the start it turned too slow. So if your speed is zero, then, or, so if you're turning right, then when you want to turn left, it turns left a bit faster, so you don't have to slow down from right to allow you to get out of stick situation. Another problem we're having is that you have to stop and start the code every time you want to play it, or you want to an error and the buttons don't work, and eventually the game crashes. And another bug, which I alluded to earlier on with the time I'm going to show you now, is you can still press the buttons and run another instance of the game, as you can see, and it just breaks everything. So I still need to find that. If any of you guys know how to prevent that, how to stop certain parts of code from happening, I've tried stop function, I don't know how to use that, quit function and just end all the code. Return function only works in loops, which is not a loop, it just is constantly happening, so it's kind of like a loop but different. Pass wouldn't do anything, so if anyone knows how to fix that problem, I'd appreciate it. Um, 
so yeah, this is like game. Um, um, it's up on GitHub, which I'll also leave the link in the description to, so I'll fully add it in GitHub. Um, also, the playlist to my previous videos will be at the end of this one. And I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any other questions on how the game works, or any questions on how to get started in Python, or how to use, I know a ton of tutorials, not by me, um, I've not got Python tutorials. Um, I learned this in high school, which I'm still in. So, yeah, I'm just a beginner. But for me, I think this was a great starting out for Python Turtle games. Because I never really knew how to use Python Turtle until now. I didn't even know how to make multiple surprises until about two weeks ago. So, hey. But I think this is pretty cool. So, thank you guys for watching. And